Today we're looking at the Laser Egg 2 Plus. You can check out the previous review on the uh, the card up in the top right hand corner. So this is a new release of a older product or a new generation of an older product. So Kytera put out the Laser Egg 2 Plus and this is a really, really cool device if you're interested in understanding um, the air you're breathing, that your family's breathing, that your kids are breathing, that your pets are breathing, that all of us, we take this stuff into our lungs. So I think it's important to know what we're putting in there. So the Laser Egg 2 Plus, what the real difference here is between the 2 Plus and the previous Laser Egg 2 version is the addition of the volatile organic compound sensor. So air quality is not as simple as just, you know, humidity and temperature, right? You have the dust levels, the particulate matter, um, you have the volatile organic compounds, it's just things breaking down in your house that go into the air you breathe. So it's nice to know what those are so you can then connect this to the rest of your Apple HomeKit and do things like turn on an air purifier, turn on a fan, right? Which is really cool and that's something that the Laser Egg 2 Plus is really good at. The other thing that makes this kind of different from the rest of the air sensors at least in the home kit market, is this is portable. It is USB powered, but it has an internal battery that will allow it to run for eight hours. So you can move it around your house if you're uh, trying to figure out what's going on in a specific room. So let's take a look at the unboxing. So I really like the packaging here. It is clear, it is Laser Egg Plus. 2 plus it works with apple home kit and it shows you right there on the box exactly what it does it's got the uh volatile organic compound me measurements the pm 2.5 accuracy tells you what kind of battery is in it humidity temperature all that stuff right and as you can see this has both chinese and english on the packaging in that this is a product that was actually coming out of china where they they kind of have air quality issues so you know they're probably pretty serious about this so getting into the box here, you can see the, um, again, they're, they're focused on air quality, which is nice. You've got the kind of three, 360 degree, this is what you're going to be seeing. And that kind of reminds me of maybe a flower pollen on the back here. So the first thing out of the box is the manual and the getting started guide here, which is great, right? It's, uh, it's always easy to, to have the instructions right up front. Gives you a lowdown on what's connected with the app. Without the app, this has an LCD screen on it as well. So you don't even really need the app, which is kind of nice, right? Uh, firmware updates, you're going to need firmware updates, Apple HomeKit, all that. You are going to need the app, but you don't need to have your phone present, which is, again, one thing I really like about this. This is... Um, right now the only Apple HomeKit air quality sensor that you're going to be able to look at and see exactly what's going on in the area where this is set up without having to look at your phone or ask Siri, right? And I, I think that's very useful. You can put this in your kitchen or wherever you want and see exactly what's going on right on the screen there without having to, um, to grab your phone. As this is USB powered, I'm just going to grab a USB power brick here and plug it into the back and turn this thing on and we will get started with the setup. So we will quickly get this into position, get this turned on. You can see it says hello right there, right? So this is the startup and you've got the press the home button to continue here. So you can actually work this device without even being logged into your phone at all, which is, um, again, I think that's really cool is you've got the, the LCD functionality here, but it does tell you if you want full power, you want to get everything out of this device go in and grab the device itself connected to Wi-Fi because then you're going to be able to do more things like grab your current, your air um, in your area, your weather conditions, all that kind of stuff. So let's go take a look at the app. So here we are in the app and you can see I've already got the laser egg 2 connected in the kitchen, um, but I want to add in another laser egg, right? I can see my air quality is good. I can grab all that, the AQI, which is kind of an aggregate measurement, the PM2.5 temp humidity, that's the laser egg 2. But if I want to add a new one, I'm going to have to go in and um, click on that plus button, right? Which is what I kind of want to do. So we're going to do there. And it's going to say, hey, do I want a new city, new station, or a new device? So city station allows you to grab um, and present that on the device itself, your local weather conditions. So not what your, your sensor is testing, but what is actually being tested outside by some external web service, which is kind of cool, right? You can get that in there. So you've got the home setup code here. The home kit setup, 
I'm going to try it again, but I'll let you guys know that it took me quite a bit of trying to do this. I'm doing the short version here. You can see um, it, it really didn't actually allow me to push the network settings over. It didn't work. Um, I don't know if this is a common thing with the device, but it seems to be common enough that thankfully Kytera has given us another way to push those settings over, which is very, very nice of them. Um, so yes, I had a little bit of trouble. I couldn't get it added immediately, but I was able to go through and push those settings over using the, the Kytera app, the way that they're, you're supposed to be using it. So if you go into settings here and you go into troubleshooting, it says add a device without a home. Okay, well, I can do that. So let's put the, the Wi-Fi password in. Hold the mode button down and uh, push the next button and away we go. And this was successful. So after pushing the Wi-Fi settings over using the manual method, I was then able to go back in and add it um, using the normal HomeKit method, right? So I just pressed on that press button, the plus button, new device, laser egg two plus. Uh, I want to put it in the home I want to put it for. Um, the Wi-Fi setting is done, so I don't worry about that. And then I'm just going to go and put in the HomeKit code. So I did have to type this in manually, right? So nearby accessories. I'm going to hit the manual button and I'm going to type in the code because for whatever reason, I couldn't get HomeKit to scan it in. So again, I had a few problems getting this set up, um, but it's nothing insurmountable and nothing that the app really didn't help me get through. There we go. Blue check mark. Everything is good. It's now connected to HomeKit, right? Which is awesome. So this is an air quality sensor. Um, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to put this into... Um, the living room, which is where I'm going to have this sitting. And I'm going to say air quality sensor. I can change the name if I want to. I can do all that uh, regular home kit stuff. In this case, I'm going to call it AQ for air quality, laser egg two plus. I'll put the plus sign at the back. Um, but, which is kind of interesting, I can't use a plus sign. So this is the first time I've actually found this with HomeKit is that there are even more um, restrictions around the naming conventions. It must start and end with a letter or a number. You can't have a plus there at the end. So I'm just going to type out the word plus. One of those things that we learn over time, it's the, uh, it's, it's the limitations of the system we're dealing with. So we click on the next button and then we see which next sensor we have. So next up are the humidity and the temperature sensors. So we'll just We'll fast forward through those and we'll get back into the device itself and look at the um, the Laser Egg 2 Plus. So there's still something going on with the YLAN settings here. So I'm not sure why that is, but I, I will tell you it is working fine um, and has been for a few weeks now. So the, the setup here, eh, not, not the best setup, not the easiest setup in the world, but the device itself, I really like. I really like the fact that I can move it around. I like the fact that it's got the LCD display on it. I like the fact that it is um, doing these multiple measurements um, and updating itself. I think it's every minute, right? So it's doing measurements, like something like 5,000 measurements every second. It's insane on the dust. Um, so it's very accurate and it really, it's portable and it allows me to, to really understand what is going in the lungs of my family, right? And allows me then, because it's connected to HomeKit, to adjust my settings dynamically based on what my sensors are doing, right? When what that means is, is that when the volatile organic compounds goes up, I can turn an air purifier on. I can turn my, um, I can turn the fans on if there's too much CO2 pooling around, right? Um, all these kinds of things. That's the beauty of HomeKit is you can really tie this stuff all together and have your house adapt to give your you and your family the best living environment that you can get. So we're going to pop over to the Apple Home app real quick and complete the tour. You can see here the Laser Egg 2 Plus is in here. Um, you can see the particulate matter size for the air quality. So that's the 2.5. You can see the battery level. So it's charging. It's at 48%, right? Which is kind of cool that I can move this thing around. It's not always, doesn't always have to be near a plug. We can also dig in here and look at the humidity sensor, right? So the 41%. Again, I've got the battery level right there um, for this device. I can see the room it's in. This is, it's, it looks exactly the same, right? This is not rocket science here. That's the beauty of HomeKit is no matter which one of these settings I'm looking at, 
which one of these devices doesn't matter if I'm in a laser egg two or I'm using a NetAtmo healthy home coach or uh, a Eve room or, or, or right. Pick your choices. They're available and they're presented in the same way. So one thing to be aware of is that the humidity, the air quality, those sensors, they're actually not available for you as an automation trigger within the native Apple home app. So you're going to have to look at something like this, the third party home app, which I'll put a link in in the video details or the Elgato Eve or I'm uh, sorry, just Eve. They have uh, rebranded themselves. Right. So you can go in and you can see what all the characteristics are and pretty much create an automation based on any of these, which is pretty cool to say the least. What do you guys think? Is this something you consider putting in your house? Do you guys care about air quality or, or, or am I the only air nerd out there? And it's okay if I am. I know I've got some issues. Comments, questions, you know what to do. Put in there below. Likes and subscribes are always appreciated. If you haven't subscribed already, why not? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn how to make your house just a little bit smarter using Apple HomeKit, please check out in the video details. You will find a link and a coupon code to my Udemy course. Thanks.